Hi, I'm Peter, and this is Go Verb Noun. This week, we're talking to Dr. Joe Hansen, PhD, from the channel It's Okay to Be Smart, which also falls under the umbrella of PBS Digital Studios, just like last week's interview with Mike Rugnetta, uh, when we were talking about PBS Idea Channel. So for this first part of the video, we're going to be talking to Joe a little bit about what it's like working with PBS and what really that gets him. Uh, we're also going to talk about you know why he got started and how he got started and really what the big impetus behind it is, as well as some of the standard questions. And then after that, we'll go into part two. So let's take a peek and see what's going on. My name is Joe Hansen. I make the show uh, It's Okay to Be Smart on YouTube, brought to you by PBS Digital Studios. Uh, I, I teach people about the wonderful parts of science, explain how the natural world works, try to express my excitement and wonder uh, in an infectious capacity, uh, and uh, hopefully we have some fun doing it. So, what's a PhD like you doing in an online medium like this? Uh, yeah, so I have, I have a PhD in biology. Um, I think most people realize that who watch, who watch my show. Uh, the, this is never something I thought I would be doing like three years ago, sitting in my lab uh, doing molecular biology, doing my research. Like, never would have dreamed that I'd be uh, making YouTube videos that, you know, hundreds of thousands of people would be watching. Uh, much less for like this, this, this prestigious organization like PBS. Um, but so one thing that, 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 that occurred to me, uh, you know, my love for science has just it's been there forever. I, it's, it's, it's since it's, as long as I can remember, uh, I've, I've been in love with science. When I was in grad school, one of the big parts of that was teaching. Uh, you know, <laughs> grad students do most of the teaching in colleges today in the U.S. It's, it's a sad fact. Um, and God, I just fell in love with it. It was, it was amazing. Like just that, that direct connection with being able to, um, to deliver information and get somebody excited about it and sort of change the way they view the world, even if it's like cell division I mean, or something like that. I mean, that's, that's an amazing uh, feeling. I mean, teachers must get addicted to this, like that light bulb going off in the students' heads. Uh, when you experience that, any teacher will know exactly what I'm talking about, that feeling. You just want more of it all the time. Uh, and so I started, I started a blog uh, it's a way to kind of express this, to, to want to deliver science to people in a way that, um, that, was, that was cool to me, that was exciting to me. So I hopped on Tumblr because I spend a lot of time on Tumblr. I was like, hey, nobody's talking about science here. Let's, let's rock and roll. Let's do it. So I started It's Okay to Be Smart. Uh, it's okay to be smart .com. Um, You know, a lot of people on Tumblr have been, uh, out there have been following me for a long time. Uh, and that just exploded. Like people were thirsty for this stuff. And it was amazing uh, to have that kind of response. Um, I think a lot of people out there in the world, when they think about science, like they think it's some kind of like dying interest or that like the people that there aren't, isn't an audience for this stuff out there. And obviously we know that's not true. Uh, but firsthand I saw that, I was like, they're, they're thirsty brains. They're, they're sponges that are just waiting to be soaked, but they weren't being reached. Like nobody was talking to them, no, to them, like speaking their language, communicating to them in a way that was meaningful, that like talked about their internet, like their science in a way that was important to them. Uh, so I, I, I did that, I guess. I just, I just picked things that were interesting to me. And luckily a lot of people agreed with me. Um, and after a couple of years, like, I was just sort of wondering what comes next and uh, this you know Emily Emily Grassley talked about this in her video like this this mix of luck and preparation like this this magical uh, you know was it lucky was it what happened I just got this email one day from PBS saying we're looking to start a science show we think you're cool do you want is this something you'd be interested in so we we put it together like we turned it's okay to be smart into it's okay to be smart on YouTube and uh, I said, you know what? This is this is amazing. Like this is the future. This is where, this is where uh, you know, kind of the nexus of tomorrow's entertainment and communication and and hopefully education is going to be. It's happening right there. And um, they gave me a great opportunity to to make something really awesome. And that is has turned into it's a get me smart. The video version. What does working with PBS bring to the table when it comes to making a channel on YouTube? So, so I'm incredibly lucky to work with this awesome organization. PBS Digital Studios is a pretty new branch of PBS, like the big head that produces things like Antiques Roadshow and you know Sherlock gets played on there and everything like that. Um, 
but they sort of realize the same thing that I did. Like there's, there's hungry audiences out there that maybe aren't necessarily gonna like tune in to PBS stations. So what can we make that would, you know, that would be deliverable, that, that, that would speak to them where they already are. So um, yeah, PBS Digital Studios has a number of shows now, like PBS Idea Channel and stuff like that. Oh, it's okay to be smart is one of those. What they do, uh, it's, I, I'm so lucky to work for them because if you were gonna design like the perfect arrangement of, hey, we're gonna support you and help produce your show and give you money, like money's the important thing here. Um, and, you know, just do what you do anyway. But we're just gonna help you make it like as good as you possibly can. So, it, it's like, I, I, I kept waiting for a, a catch. So what, what's the catch? <laughs> and there's no catch, I mean, um, I'm the, the writer, the, the creator, the host, uh, you know, one of the creative directors of the show. And whatever we sit around and the question that we want to answer, like, that's what we talk about. That's the episode that we make. And PBS says, uh, you know, they take a look at it, they advise us, they, 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 they give us some feedback. But, you know, this is, this is our show. It has PBS's name on it, but they are amazing in letting us have creative freedom. Uh, and that is a beautiful kind of system to work under. I think anybody who makes things would agree. Like, somebody wants to, like, give me stuff? Like money to make make a show and but they're not gonna like get in my way uh it, it's it's a dream so very thankful uh to viewers like you out there um yeah so it, you know the the typical episode it, it we run a lot like an, like a like another youtube show we just uh we have we have pbs to help us promote as well which is really great you know uh, we, we're kind of unique in that we reach a little bit beyond YouTube too. You know, 95%, 98% of the people that, that watch our shows are, are watching them on YouTube because that's that we're a YouTube network. You know, we are a YouTube show. That's what we want, we're trying to make. But PBS has a, a great website. They've got, uh, you know, they've got, they've got apps for like the iPad and your Xbox and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool that we're seeing all these new places that, that online video can be accessed. And so uh, we, don't, we don't know exactly where that's gonna take us these days, but it's pretty cool that we have, you know, PBS helps us reach out into these other, these other places online too. Can you talk a little bit about PBS as a YouTube entity? Yeah, so when people see like big brands like PBS or like Disney or these big, big, these big companies moving onto YouTube, they don't know quite, quite what to make of it. And I think some people kind of step back and they're maybe a little bit afraid, like, or like you know, Discovery Networks and these huge multinationals. Like, who is this guy? Like, maybe I haven't heard of this, this channel before, this person. Um, this is a big company. Is this just like some hired gun? Are they trying to play me? Are they trying to jump onto the YouTube thing because it's cool now? And what we're really striving after is, is making shows that are kind of like, you know, that are by people that are, that, you know, we're part of this community too, you know. And I, I, I've been into, you know, I'm, I'm inspired by all my fellow creators. Like these are the people who got me into this. Um, so it, it's really important for, I hope that people get that because we have this big name on it, it's not necessarily different than another show. But being as it is PBS, uh, you know, Hank alluded to this in his video too about like, I don't know if people realize how expensive TV and movies are, like like the incredible cost <laughs> that they maybe don't need to always be spending that money. But uh, you know, we are able to take a mu you know much less than than a TV budget and uh, from from a big company that's used to producing things like that, and uh, and try to do something a little special on YouTube. That's what we all want to do out there on YouTube, right? It's kind of like make something new and unique and uh, it's a big crowded world of online video. So, you know, to get noticed and things like that. So what we're able to do is, you know, we set out with a very clear goal, um, you, know, you know, about a year, a little over a year ago when we like really said, amped up the show, that we're gonna make the, 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 the prettiest, most engaging, fun, like exciting, uh, show that we can you know that means a lot of animations uh, that means some really you know careful sound design like making sure every shot is, is as beautiful as we make it like trying to pay attention to these details we all know these are things that don't have to exist on YouTube like there's amazing creators that that, that work on their own uh, and we just said okay what can we do to try to just do something that's different and special for us and 
that meant for us, uh, you know, using illustrations and 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 uh, and, and like special effects, like this, this space battles episode that's like, a, it's like half of Star Wars. I mean, it's incredible kind of stuff that we're able to do with their support, but it's still like nowhere near what they spend on TV and film. Um, so that's that's amazing. We it's it, we're given this big open sandbox to play in, uh, where, you know, it's it's possibilities are. They're not endless, but they're, they're certainly a lot more wide open than if I was just shooting this in my bedroom. Uh, you know, we could tell great stories doing that kind of stuff. Never want to take away from other creators who, who do amazing stuff, you know, in, in, in what, what's been YouTube for a long time. We're just trying to figure out what the next evolution is and make something that we're, that, that PBS and, and that we're really proud of. Like, we want PBS to be proud of it, and we want to... We, we take that very seriously, that we, we are making this for this esteemed company that this is one of the most trusted uh, kind of brands out there when it comes to teaching people things and making quality nonfiction and education. Um, I mean, when I was offered this opportunity, you know, I, like, I grew up on Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street and uh, 321 contact like we can push it all the way back we'll just give away you know i'm old man like we can go we can go way back these are the this is what made me this curious person i am today so much of that came from pbs and we take that very seriously to try to continue that tradition um but i hope that people don't look at at, at, at a branded channel like that and 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 feel nervous like i'm not a i'm not a host that they went out and grabbed like i get these comments sometimes like oh, no, like this this hired, this hired nerd or something like this, when people don't really understand what we're doing. And I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a scientist guy. Like, I'm a guy who just likes to write about this stuff and, and, and spread this around. Like, I'm not just some <laughs> Hank Green look-alike. That's another common comment. Can we clear something up real quick, audience? Um, I don't have my glasses on today, but uh, I'm not Hank Green. Let's just establish that. With the most, second most common comment on, on It's Okay to Be Smart. Two blonde guys with glasses who talk about science. Uh, yeah, so I hope the people, you know, I hope they trust us, and that, that's something we're really that that we all try to build with our channels. But man, it, it's pretty cool to be given these these resources and opportunities. What surprised you about being on YouTube? Uh, so I came onto YouTube about the same time as Emily Grassley in the Brain Scoop. Oh, we both started around the same time. Um, you don't have to watch my old videos; I'd rather you watch the newer ones. But uh, the YouTube has changed a lot, he said, obviously. Around, you know, around two years ago um, is the time we stopped seeing the people we subscribe to on our front page. We stopped seeing uh, the ability to like uh, respond with videos. And it's a lot of this sort of com easier first generation YouTube community stuff um, that a lot of the, what I call like the first generation channels were built on. Um, you know, if you look at the at the science channels that have been around for a while, like uh, you know, the SciShow and Smart Every Day, Vsauce, Veritasium, Minute Physics, um, you know, even ASAP Science came along a little bit later. Still, I think kind of got in in this original time in YouTube, and it's changed so much since then. It, it's I mean, it, it, it's continually changing. We all know that, but uh, YouTube became. You know, everybody who starts a channel and puts a video out there, no matter if it's from PBS or from your bedroom, we all have to deal with that big discovery problem. Not the channel, but you know, people finding our videos. And that surprised me. Like, you know, just how challenging that would be to, um, that, that people could subscribe to you and, and, and still somehow never see your videos. Uh, and, and, and how, how important it was to really build up that sense of community and, and, and trying to figure out new ways to do that. So uh, you can you can definitely look at channels that started within the last two years and channels that started before that. Um, and again, like the, the, not to take away anything from these amazing creators that, that were around for, for a long time, since 07, 08, 09, some of them. But they're in a different league in terms of like subscriber numbers and and, and that translates into views and communities that have existed for a long time. Does it maybe, have viewers gotten comfortable? I worry about this too, like, if they already subscribe to five science channels, how do we motivate them to, 
to tell them that there's room for more, that we all have like a different way of telling stories, um, to, to break them out of their comfort zone uh, and, and try to deal with this new YouTube where so much of our of driving people to check your stuff out and, and be a committed viewer, not just that one video, but you know, that real true subscriber wants to come back and see everything that you do. It's, it's, it, it's a little more challenging to do that these days. That definitely surprised me when I got on. Um, and we've had great success. Like I'm, there's zero complaints about how things have gone for us. Like I'm so, just so ecstatic with the response we've gotten from people. Um, but you know, it, it, it was certainly a little shocking, like, uh, things seem to be different in the old days, but you know this is how things go. We adapt and, and, and we figure it out. It's it, it comes down to kind of your definition of success, I guess. Um, you know, if if your definition of success is getting a million views and uh, you know the front page of Reddit or something with 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 a particular video, that's going to be really good for that week but I'm not sure that you're gonna be able to, like that those are gonna be your passionate people that are gonna to wanna to come back and hang out with you every day. Um, so I, I'm definitely, you know, we have this, one of the, one of the blessings of, of kind of like this arrangement of getting to make videos for a company like PBS is that uh, we're not driven by view numbers, I think, is in the same way that some channels are, in that old kind of ad-driven YouTube world. Um, you know, to put it bluntly, like I get the same paycheck no matter what happens, like assuming people still watch, which thanks for, thanks for doing that. Uh, so it's, it's great to have that little additional bit of freedom too. And we've seen other stuff like that with Subbable coming in and Patreon and other different ways of supporting channels that aren't necessarily based on that, like chasing numbers. Cause none of us want to be number chasers. We want to make what we're proud of. So being able to connect to that, um, and adapting to that has been, has been a really interesting that's one of the pluses of i think like the new youtube is there's um we get different definitions of success i'd rather have twenty thousand incredibly committed subscribers that want to see everything we do than uh you know half a million eh, sort of subscribers you know I'm, I'm equally nervous about about brands coming in there and ruining our our playground that we've that we've carefully built you know, I mean, we, what other playground on earth have like the people who play there gotten to build? You know, Facebook's starting to make so much video now, all these little autoplay things that come through your, they're about to overtake, I think they just overtook, um, YouTube videos are now the second most kind of watched video on Facebook. Like you just can't depend on your Facebook feed now to, to help people find you. Because Facebook wants you to watch Facebook videos. But Facebook doesn't take care of the people that make videos. They just want you to be on Facebook. YouTube's still the place that takes care of the people that make the content for YouTube. And that's completely unique in, on the internet. I mean, it's amazing. So one of the things that I noticed that I thought was really interesting was the fact that uh, PBS is doing so well at online video. Like, I don't know about you guys, uh, but when I was younger, I thought of PBS as like Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street uh, and those old telethons and stuff like that. Uh, but that is not today's PBS, and I think that's awesome that they've been able to be so successful at it. Whereas last week, we were talking with Mike Rugnetta from PBS Idea Channel. Um, I think Joe's channel, It's Okay to Be Smart, is a little bit more in the vein of what we ex come to expect uh, from a quote-unquote educational channel, especially one that's being put out by PBS, and I think it's so great that it's working so well. So let's continue the discussion in part two. Click the link wherever it shows up. Go ahead. You can just not watch me do this for a little bit longer, just go straight into it. Go, go.